an unrelenting descent into madness for which the only recourse is to weep. Annyeong Haseo and welcome to Awful Advent, a countdown of 13 holiday horror movies for the 13 days before Christmas. This year's theme is Scary Santas and, while our fifth features a slog, we're not going it alone. It's 1964's Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. The children of Mars have lost their childish sense of wonder. Their parents are told that Mars needs a Santa Claus, so they go to Earth to kidnap him. However, some Martians want the plan to fail. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians is a famously bad movie with stilted dialogue, bad makeup, and cheap special effects. That it's also in the public domain has led to it being a staple of horror host shows, most famously Mystery Science Theater 3000 which used it as its Christmas special in 1991, but also Cinematic Titanic, Cinema Insomnia, and Nightmare Theater, as well as many others. Since I always include the Christmas episode of a horror host show on these lists, this year I chose an episode of Elvira's Movie Macabre that features this movie. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians is a kids movie made for kids enjoyment, and I say that to counter many of the criticisms the movie gets. The plot about two children being taken to Mars with Santa, Santa being given an automated toy factory, and the villains being thwarted by Christmas toys is literally childish. It follows the logic of a story imagined by a child. Likewise, the bad makeup, cheap costumes, and cardboard sets operate the same way. They are scaffolding for children's imaginations, not Marvel-esque attempts at realism. The movie is adults playing along with children's fantasy, playing the roles the kids imagine. That's why the performances are so broad. They're pantomime, the uncle playing the big bad wolf for the kids. And this is the charm of the movie. It's like watching a recording of the kids' winter play from school. It's not quality, but it's nice and nostalgic. You're not watching for the story, you're watching to vicariously engage in the emotion with which it was made. This movie is imbued with the sense that everyone involved thinks, this will make kids happy, and that this is reason enough to make the movie. That's a sentiment I can get behind. However, I don't think you'd watch the copy of this movie presented by Elvira with young kids. I chose the Elvira version because, despite my affection for MST3K and love of a Patrick Swayze Christmas, I highlighted the most recent MST3K Christmas episode last year. Plus, Elvira's team seems to be having fun in this episode. It opens and closes with a stop-motion animation, the sepulchral set is done up with gothic festiveness, and it's clear Cassandra Peterson and her writers reveled in applying her PG-13 burlesque puns to holiday tropes. All this makes watching the movie easier because, even though I have kind things to say about it, it's still not good, and Elvira's periodic appearances and gags elevate the movie's campier aspects. The movie has a sincerity that's endearing, but it's best enjoyed through an intermediary, with a horror host providing context, commentary, and comedy. Once again, because the film is in the public domain in the United States, you're spoiled for choice, and I'd recommend dropping any version into your holiday playlist, whether that be a solstice marathon or in the background at your holiday party. Just like last year, I can't properly rate the movie because I'm not recommending the movie itself. However, I will give the whole experience 4 out of 5 menacing Martians making merry. Tomorrow, are you tired of bad Santas yet? This franchise sure seems to be. Until then, stay safe and stay spooky.